things are just meant to be But right here, right now, baby I've never felt so free The following announcement has been paid for by the New World Order Welcome back, everyone. My name is Ryan Beck. I'm the star of The Ryan Beck Show. It's been a while. It's been. We've been busy. And quite frankly, we win every day. What am I going to come on here and complain about, really? Glaber sometimes boots a ground ball. So, you guys are probably wondering where I've been. Have you been busy? Are you still doing the show? Did one of the Yankee YouTubers that you made fun of on the last episode murder you? No. The answer is no. No one re one person reached out. It was Dan Rourke. Dan Rourke reached out to me. So it's time to just set it straight. We're coming for Yankees Ave. We're gonna take down their channel. It's gonna be the Ryan channel from I'm just kidding. I like Dan Rourke. <laughs> I was defending Pat Hennessy. Had to include the whole backstory. The backstory is he's Dan's old co-host. They broke up. Pat said the guys at John Boy didn't like him. I don't have some insider knowledge of John Boy. I'm just taking him at, at Pat's word. You guys can choose to believe him and dislike the John Boy guys for not liking Pat. Or you can think Pat's making the whole thing up. I don't know. I didn't think what Pat did was that bad. And literally, the John Boy channel shared some video a few weeks later of some little girl, not little, not like a toddler, but like a teenage girl getting blocked by, um, I think, Wilson Contreras and going up and having a photograph or an autograph of the picture of her being blocked. And John Boy Media was like, look at this. <laughs> like, didn't you guys all sit back while... They tried to destroy Patrick Hennessy's life literally like two weeks ago. What are you going to do, folks? Worst part about it is the hypocrisy. Oh, my God. There's one person who posted a little uh, tweet saying that... Uh, These people talk like they'd say this stuff to my face! And then he deleted the tweet because that would bring attention to this show where... His former co-host is just openly making fun of him and being very funny, doing that voice. You can imagine how much people would be laughing. So he realized, hey, it's better to take the high road and not, not participate in such shenanigans. A few things about the absurdity of they wouldn't say it to your face. Um, my job is to make everyone laugh. I don't know who would win in a fight. I'm not going to find out. If you showed up at my door, I'd lock the door and call the police. I live behind a gate. I'm not going to buzz you in. And, yeah, do you think it's a rule of doing comedy that I have to be able to beat up everyone in the room that I'm doing comedy for? No, I'm the funny guy. You came to watch the Ryan Beck show. I'm going to say funny stuff. If you don't like what I say, you can go not watch. And if I say something about you specifically, you could fire back on your own show if you'd like. You're not going to, because you know that the person who runs this channel has lots of stuff that you don't want anybody to know about. For instance, when you tried to blackmail me using a burner account. Oh, Ryan knows. So shh, just do your silly show where every joke you do is something about being Italian. Let's talk Yankees, shall we? Talking Yanks with Orion. Okay, so I nailed a bunch of things in my preseason uh, predictions. First of all, hit Volpe leadoff, write his name in ink, don't erase it for the next 15 years. Perfect. He's our third best player, should be hitting leadoff. Anyone in the comments that suggests we should drop him in the order, they should be blocked and if not killed. Anyway, Volpe leadoff, done. Done deal. Don't even don't even bother wasting our time asking if we should do anything other than him lead off. Okay. Luis Heal. I wanted him to start over Will Warren. Just because the idea of a competition in spring training means whoever plays better wins. And then you get to go on the major league team and Will Warren goes to AAA. So if your numbers are way better in spring training and it's a competition, that means Luis Heal earned it. And he's up. And he's now one of the best pitchers in baseball. I didn't realize he was going to be that good. 
I knew I was furious in 2021 when he was unbelievable and we sent him back down because Andrew Heaney, our little side project that we thought we could fix, was going to come up and pitch and he was terrible. Much like I loved Greg Allen and Estevan Florial that year. And instead of keeping playing them when both of them had an on base over 400 in their brief time up, we sent them both down so elderly Brett Gardner and Joey the Disaster Gallo could play every day. Oh, that's weird. We played them and we stopped winning. Huh, that's odd. Brett Gardner used to be really good. Okay, so did Yogi Berra. Should he be the catcher? And, of course, this doesn't even, this isn't even a brag. Obviously, Juan Soto has been unbelievable. Sign him, whatever it takes. I called it when everyone said he's going to make more than Judge. That might be a problem. Yeah, no, it's not. If it is, we sh- then Judge should be despised in New York. It's If we don't get Juan Soto back and somebody else pays him, and the reason is they, were re- they didn't want to pay him more than Judge, we should boo Aaron Judge every time he comes to the plate. We should penalize him for being so petty. Okay, so a few things that I was not right on. Not a lot, but just one thing. Austin Wells not hitting quite as well as I thought he would yet, and Trevino's hitting really well. Right this second, Trevino has earned more playing time than Austin Wells, and I love Austin Wells. I think he will be really good. But right now, Jose Trevino should probably be getting more playing time. He's legitimately, I mean, this is from a catcher especially, 283, 327, 434. That's his slug line. OPS plus a 114. An above average hitter at the catching position, hitting eighth or ninth. That's all you can ask for. Trevino should be playing right now. Okay. But this is the real reason I did this episode. Is I'm hearing a lot of... There we go. (laughs) I'm hearing a lot of nonsense regarding El Marciano. Jason Dominguez, the guy who took the world by storm last year, got called up, hit four home runs in eight days. Look, people are saying, you know, you got, who's he going to play over? I think we just ought to send him down to AAA. Oh, really? Well, I think I ought to punch you square in the mouth if you ever say something that's stupid to my face. Don't talk to my face that way! I'll give you the old wham, bam, boom! There's three players right now on the New York Yankees that have earned the right to say, I'm playing every day, write me at the top of the order, and don't bother analyzing anymore. Anthony Volpe, Juan Soto, Aaron Judge. Everybody else is lucky to be there. Everybody. That means, oh, who are you going to take away playing time to get Jason Dominguez? Well, he's going to be one of the four stars at the top of the lineup, so I don't care. Very easy. Uh, Stanton, he gets one day off a week. Guess what, Stanton? Now you got two days off a week. Um, Anthony Rizzo, against lefties, he's hitting 189, does not have a single extra base hit, and has a 259 on base. Yeah, you're now a bench piece against lefties. Um, Aaron Judge took reps at first base this spring training and last spring training. Last spring training... They dismissed it, and they're just like, oh, we needed somebody to catch balls at first base. Maybe five years from now I'll be a first baseman. This year, Aaron Boone said, well, we want to see what we have there, and you know, we want to be prepared in case of an emergency. Here's the emergency. Jason Dominguez is back, and Anthony Rizzo can't hit lefties. Judge plays first base against lefties from now on when Dominguez comes back. Okay, and Alex Verdugo, having a good year, plays every single day. But, unfortunately, you're not as good as Jason Dominguez. So guess what? You now got two days off a week. There. I just solved your problem. Jason Dominguez plays every single day. He's, he can't play literally every day because he's coming back from Tommy John, so he'll get one or two days off a week. But that's how you make room for uh, Jason Dominguez. Very simple. Trent Grisham, anyone who even mentions his name is getting punched. He might as well be a lady. He has two hits this year. He's awful. He plays very good defense. Okay. Yippee. Somebody will catch fly balls. I don't want an automatic out at the bottom of the order. When we played in Baltimore, we lost for Dugo because he went on paternity leave. What we should have done is what, what, what I thought was going to happen, and this would have been the best lineup, when we called up, I think it was Ramirez, uh, our minor league catcher, I went, oh, that makes perfect sense. We're going to play Trevino behind the plate and we're going to DH Wells because those would be our nine best hitters. It's not what we did. 
We played one of them when we played Trent Grisham in the out. I thought we were going to play Stanton somewhere in the outfield suddenly. No, we played Grisham every day. Okay, if we're not playing Stanton in the outfield and we only are going to play Wells or Trevino one at a time, then Pereira should have been called up and he should have just been playing left field for the entire series. Very simple. He can't possibly be worse than Trent Grisham was in Baltimore. Anyway, fluke, it was in May, not the end of the world. We're way ahead of the Orioles right now. Anyway, so I just kind of wanted to catch you guys up. There's not that much to complain about. We're in a really good spot right now. We just keep winning. We keep winning series. Glaber's kind of in the way. I know there's people that like Glaber. That's adorable. You guys were around. You liked Gardner and Didi Gregorius and all these lovable lugs. He's not very good. He was good last year and the year before. This year he's not as good. He's costing us games. He's slow but gets picked off of first base. He boots routine ground balls. He's not good on double plays. I would rat because be, because you used to put up with Glaber because he would hit. So then you would put up with the occasional stupid thing otherwise. But he's not hitting. So he's a below average hitter who also plays very poor defense and gets picked off of bases even though he's literally slower than Austin Wells. I looked it up on uh, Baseball Savant. He's a 21 sprint speed as of right now. Just for reference, Greg Bird, when he was on the Yankees, was a 19. So he's basically Greg Bird, but he gets picked off of first base. Make it make sense. That about wraps it up. I'm, I've had it with Glaber. DJ starts playing again. I, I don't see what the argument... It really should just be DJ LeMayu and Oswaldo should be playing and Glaber should be coming off the bench or he should be moving on from Glaber. I really... I would sacrifice Glaber's offense, whatever you think his offense is right now, just to have a second baseman that fields every ground ball. Which is why next year I'm not even... It's not even up for debate if Glaber's coming back. He's not. Play Vivas at second. Hit him ninth. I don't care. I just want ground balls to be outs. Especially when you got guys like Stroman, guys that are not strikeout guys. You know, you have Luis Heal and you'll have Colback and Rodon. But watching great D. De- Last year when we started winning, when we called up Dominguez and Wills and Pereira and Peraza, that first series at Houston, Glaber was hurt. So we had Peraza at second and Oswaldo at third. And it was just so refreshing that every ground ball with runners on base. You didn't even bat an eye. You just went, up, ground ball, double play. Glaber's not going to be nonchalant and throw the ball into the dugout. Peraza is going to be at second and just, every ball's an out. I don't care if he goes over four. There's more circumstances that are going to annoy me if I look out there and Glaber's throwing the ball all over the place or having a ground ball go under his glove yesterday. So, yeah, I've had it with Glaber. But there's very little to complain about these days other than Dominguez should be hitting second when he comes back. Your top four should be Volpe, Dominguez, Soto, Judge. Pick the rest out of a hat. Doesn't matter. Those four are four. <laughs> cut off my cut off my pinky. Those four are the mainstays in your order. That's going to be what's going to be what, what the center of the, this offense are going to be those four guys. And everybody else is a role player for Dugo five, for Dugo five, stand six, Rizzo, whatever the order is that day. Who cares? Dominguez has to be playing as much as possible. All right, that wraps it up. We'll see you next time. I'm sure I'll be back soon. I hope. Or maybe I don't hope. Maybe when things go well, there's nothing for me to talk about. Maybe that will be a good sign. Maybe when you don't see me, that means life is beautiful. Maybe. I don't know. We'll find out. You guys have a lovely Memorial Day weekend. I don't know if this is going to come out. It might come out Tuesday morning. I don't know. All right. See you next time. Peace.